All right, lads and lasses, work me along. Data set nine. Do you know, I seem to keep using New York. I don't know why. Well, I do know why, but it's not for what you might think. It's not about, oh, I want to come to New York. It's more about they've actually got a really good set of public data made available. So that uh, makes sense to use them. But we a lot going on in the world at the minute about data, you know, like how big, what can we do, how much kind of power BI actually cope with, you know, is, you know, is it actually any good, you know, a couple of million rows, is that too many? So I thought, well, do you know what? We could find a decent set, can't we? Right? New York taxi data, over 100 million rows of data. Can we actually use it? Is it something that's usable? Right? There's been a lot going on lately. Yeah, oh, we found limits in places. You know, ooh, what are they? What can we do? What can we cope with? Right? This will show you. Power BI, 100 million rows plus. Can't say fairer than that, really, can I? So let's get on with it. Eh? How are we going to go about doing this? Usual way, isn't it? Four weeks, quick and dirty. Let's go through this. A couple of hours worth of screen time. Hopefully, you'll be at the point of going, do you know what? I'm ready to crack on with this, and then we can do more. So week one, we're going to start, actually, how do we get the data, start to pull it together, make sure it's clean enough sort of thing. Data flows is how we're going to do it. We're going to put it into data flows, and we're going to make some amazing, right? With 100 million rows of data. Week two, let's combine those, pull that in, so it's actually going to be in a Power BI desktop file, and at that point, we're starting to build a report pack, aren't we? actually getting that into something meaningful, able to be used. Week three, we're going to do the DAX and do the measures, get everything sorted out so we can actually start to lay out some pages, make a report that looks good. All right? And then week four, we're going to do some more stuff with the Power BI service, put in a dashboard, publish the app, go through the process of splitting the data sets. So it made more sense we get into week four, man. You'll find out. You know, stick with us. It'll be fun. It's always fun here, man, I tell you. So week one, what we're going to do today, right? That was gone. Get with data, yeah? We need to get the raw CSV file data from the New York City Taxi Service, right? In this case, we're just going to use yellow and green taxis, right? There's a couple of others. I might sling them in later in, later on, but for today, we're just going to look at the yellow and green, right? We'll see how we're going, see how I'm starting to feel about it, right? In terms of, I want to bring them all in, process is the same, man. Gone through it, you be well happy with that. Right? We're going to look at the core data flow that we've got. So we've got a core data flow structure now at Geordie Intelligence. It makes sense to do it that way. Right? A core data flow, the idea behind it is around saying, I want to have my core data that I'm going to use and reuse and reuse again actually available as a data flow so it can be used by anyone over and over again rather than being recreated for each report pack. So I've put a calendar in there and I've just created for the sake of this a time dimension as well, right? So it's nice reusable dimensions that are going to be of value to multiple report packs. And then lastly, we're going to look at the data set data flows. So actually what data flows are we putting in to the data set? So that'll be how we actually pull in the yellow and green and then combine them together. Okay. So where do we start? So the data is going to come from, it's the New York City data set. So we're going to, anyway, we're going to download that, download the monthly files because it's every month. right? And for the sake of this, of this, we're going to just do 2019 and 2020. right? Obviously, could come back, could come back. In terms of if you want to, it's the same process. Just pull more files, run them through, right? Run them through this routine. You'll find it works fine. No big deals. Get more than that. You know, if you get more out of it, let's get more out of it. So tell you what, eh? how should we start this? Let's get rid of this, eh? Let's get rid of this ugly mug. It's going to be face, right? And we'll crack on. All right, so here we are. This is the page, right? NYC government site. Put a link on it down below and be another link on Geordie Intelligence page. All the stuff, all the files we can share with you, we're going to share there, right? Everything's going to go on there so you can reuse, build this for yourselves. Start with, in here, you see we've got different months. 
And for each of these, it's just click on it and it'll download for you, right? That's not too difficult, is it? All I've done after that is I've combined all these into a single location. Okay. So we've got a nice file folder with it all in, right? And then the last thing to remember is to make sure that you download as well the shape file, yeah? So you're going to need lookup zone, all these sort of stuff you need, right? And we'll go through next week as to what we actually do with them, how we make it all work. That's what data. Get cracking, start to download it. Right, it takes a while. There's a lot of stuff there, which is kind of partly why I didn't get all the way back down to 2009. Give it a can, right? Download it. You might want to just do the green taxis because there seem to be a lot less of the green taxis. Right? There might be a lot less of the four higher vehicle records. I'm not sure how far back they can, you know. Term. So you figured out now how to download the data, where we get the data from. Yeah, that's easy enough to deal with, isn't it? Now we're going to look at the core for our data flow, so we're core data, and then we're going to look at the aggregations of it. So how do we actually set up all the geography and all that piece as well? Because we're going to have that custom NYC shape map. We mentioned a shape file, right? So how can we get a nice, pretty picture that's going to look like New York City? So here, here we am. Hi, this is me default area, right? This is me data core, data set, or workspace that I set up, right? In here, I've just got a calendar, Click on the calendar and you'll see I've got a calendar and I've got a time dimension, right? Let's have a look at what they are just so it can kind of make a little bit more sense to you. So my calendar here, you can see I've got my dates, I've got my years, my months, I've got my uh, drifts columns. So I've got my day drift, my year drift, my month drift, right? Useful things. Went through, we've done a video specifically about this and what the value add it brings doing this. The video tells you we're going on this. This scans from 1900 all the way up to 2100. And it's one that we can just filter when we're going to use it. So in this case, when we pull it through in next week's video, we'll filter down. So we're just looking at 2019 and 2020. That'll be all we'll do, yeah? Keep it nice and simple. If you want to add any more to it, you can. If you want to add your custom corporate calendar, right? Or if you've got like a special month calendar, if you're using like a retail 445, 544, we'll go through how to actually pull that in and put that in and set that all up within your data set here. So we've got a nice date calendar, yeah? What I've also done is I've put time in, right? Because time is really important, isn't it, for taxis? <laughs> what do you mean? Time? I didn't get it. It's not that difficult when you think about it, but what I've done for this is I've just put it in every minute. I've decided I didn't care about seconds, right? Seconds, I'm not interested in. And we go through every minute of a day. So it's like, what, 1,400? 1,400, 1,440 from memory? Minutes in a day. And you can see here, if we load this, I've set it up into three-hour windows as well. Midnight, the two, so three in the morning, it's kind of late night. Then for the next three hours, early morning. Then we've got the morning rush, gone up to 9 a.m., Mid morning, lunchtime, afternoon, up until 6 p.m., evening, and then night, and up to midnight. So that's what core data set, yeah, or the core work data flows that have been built to be reused by any report pack that we have. So it's just a case of making sure when you open Power BI Desk, you're like, I need a calendar, man. You just can open up this from the data flow, use this calendar, right? And this refreshes every day. Data set nines data flows. What are we doing for here? Okay. Now I've already pulled through green taxis, right? Just so you could see kind of what it would look like when it's there. Yeah. So you can see we've got things like the source name, we've got things like this, vendor ID, all these kinds of things, right? What we're going to do, let's go on and edit the edit entities and you'll see how it's all built. So what I've put in is I've written a function and I've put in two parameters, right? Which are going to make it possible for us to share these hopes. So we'll test out, test this out, hopefully be able to share it out. We use, and then all you will have to do is change, change the uh, parameter names to something that actually makes sense for your business, right? And then you should be able to use it. I'm not sure of the performance of data flows with a free subscription, I'll be honest. So if you haven't got a pro subscription, I'll apologize if you can't do this video set, um, but hopefully you'll figure it out or you'll be able to follow along and see what we're doing. What you can do definitely though, is actually replicate all this in Power BI Desktop if you want to. All right, so every moment's a teaching moment, isn't it? Yeah. And one of the things that we've got here is these applied steps. 
right? And I've said enough times now, I think, I'm going to keep saying it on that, that because of the way it's presented in Power BI, it looks like it's going this way down, right? And you'd be forgiven for thinking that because I can say, right, well, I'm going to start with my source and you can see actually, well, this is the source. This is what comes back. And then we can say, well, let's go, what happens next? What happens next? And that makes sense. So from a human mindset, it is logically going from top to bottom. Programmatically, it's going from bottom to top. It's you against these applied steps, right? The issue that you really need to kind of just get your head around is that if we go in here and go to the advanced editor, you'll see that that's not necessarily the case. So what we've got is we've got a let clause at the beginning, okay? So we're effectively defining a load of variables. So every line here is a variable with a name. So source is going to equal SharePoint files. Right, and then a parameter for where the SharePoint files are. The filtering of the rows, the initial filtering, is going to be based on source. And then for that. So you can't do it all by going down, which is kind of the point. It ends up going up. So what we do is we're saying, well, in the end, I just want to see the result of this last function or this last variable that's being defi defined. Right, And this is going to be expanding the table column so we're going to expand from here, from the result of this. So at that point, we go, well, hang on. I didn't know what that result is. So let's jump back to here and then see, right, so what we're going to expand the table from there. But I didn't understand what that is. So it goes back. So what happens is, in essence, the program is going back or the processing engine is going back to the beginning to get this, to then follow through and expand out each of these little areas that it's not been able to expand until it gets back to the beginning. So it kind of goes, do 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 Ta-da! Sound effects would be great, Microsoft. You know, if you're listening, yeah, maybe. Do -do 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 -do. Do -do 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 -do. Ta -da! Every time you refresh the table would be brilliant. It's one of them things. As soon as you kind of get your head around that and it goes, oh, right. It, it becomes much easier to deal with them. Okay. So we've done that. I've written a function. As I say, this is the function I've written. The reason for it is if I took the date time values that we've got for the pickup and for the drop off times and convert them to just time, I'd still have to get rid of the seconds or I'd have to have a time dimension that included seconds. And I thought, well, I didn't want to do that. So I thought, wait, I'll write a function because it's quicker and easier. And some people go, it's not quick and easy. Eight lines of code, man. Dead quick and dead easy. Include this as well in Geordie Intelligence. This is a really quick and easy thing to do. As you start to become comfortable with Power BI Query Editor, it becomes much easier, especially once you start to figure out what's going on with them, to say, in this case, I'm going to write a function rather than having to write out, effectively, it's just that line, it's just line four, that I have to write out every time I want to use or convert a date time value to just the hours and minutes, right? And you have to put in seconds so it can then become a time. It would be annoying to do. And I thought, well, if we just write this function, then I can call it every time I want. If I need to change things or make any tweaks, I just have to tweak it here. That's why I've done it that way. And in this case, we're using it four times. If you were to pull through and say, well, I'm going to do all the, you know, high yield taxis, whatever it was, high capacity and the other one as well, that'd be eight altogether, wouldn't it? This is easy. Works, dead quick, dead simple. Last thing we've got is we've got some geography, yeah? So we mentioned lookup points as to where it actually is everything, right? And you need this because in terms of the taxi data, it says pick up from one, pick up from location one, drop off in location two. Wait, that doesn't mean out to me, like. So what we've got is we've got this lookup table as well. Now, because there's so many rows of data and because you want to have origin and destination, things like that, after much head scratching and thinking through it, right, I decided to put them all in to one. Okay, so if we come through here, look at the taxi data, we've got, we'll pick up zone, the borough, drop off zone, yeah? So we can see we've got all that stuff there. So that was gone. We start, we're going to get the data, more, and in this case, it's going to be a SharePoint folder, right? So we're going to pull in the data from a SharePoint folder. So we're going to paste in the location, right? It's going to be this. See, I'm currently signed in. So if you weren't, you could click sign in as a different user, tell you tell it who you want to sign in as, sort that out, and then click next. Yeah. So we've signed in with my Microsoft account because it's 
share point online, I hit next, and I get to this point here. This point, I'm just going to click OK, and it brings me in a nice query. In terms of me filtering, the next step that I've done is got me folder path, okay? And all I'm doing with this is I'm looking for the NYC taxi row. So I'm going to unselect them all, find the row, click OK. Great. That's the two steps that I've covered putting in these two parameters, okay? So the first parameter here is just pulling in the site information, and then we've got the folder information, which ends in the, the row. There's other ways of doing it, but this, I think, is just the easiest way was just to say, right, at this point, untick the enable load there, and I'm going to come up to the other one, and hopefully you can see I've got the same number of rows, everything's the same. So we've got these here. Now, the first thing we need to do is remember that what we're looking for is the yellows. So if we come in here, and we're going to have a text filter, and we say it begins with. So where it begins with, yellow. Okay. Remember, it's case sensitive, so I'm going to say yellow, lowercase. Click OK. Okay. So now I've just got the files that relate to the yellow taxis. That was all we needed to do to filter it down. So to replay what we've done, right? I've connected Power BI service to my SharePoint online site, where I can store tons of files, right? So these can make really good file repositories. I've then used two filters, it's only two filters I've had to do to actually get down to really what it was I needed. And from here, I could actually go further. So depending on whatever it was I needed, like I could say, oh, I just want like the latest created one. So I could go on through and say, right, do the latest. Yeah, so we could say is latest. This is a very powerful way of actually taking what is legacy ways of processing data, so files, and doing something useful with it. So in this case, we've got all these. We're now, because we've got our yellow data, let us combine it. So we hit this little icon here to say, Combine. I'm going to click that, and it's going to start combining the files. So we've started combining the files. It's going to show us this header. This is kind of what the first files look like based on the first 200 rows, which is all going to be in the first file. So it gives you a good indication, right, this is what we need to do. So we're going to click OK, right? And what you can see over here behind the scenes is it's created a transform file and a whole folder structure around this, which is actually how it's going to process these. So it creates a function, and it's going to create a sample file which will be the first file and then it'll run through and do it and we've now got here is your join and we can see what's happened so it's invoked a custom function renamed some columns it's done some other work right and it's now pulled this all together effectively filtering out hidden files we're going to invoke a custom function on the column which is the combined column which is then going to lead to us having so we've invoked the custom function which is we've run that on this binary data which then has produced this table we've renamed column so name has become source name is here right because that was the original file name we've then removed all the other columns except from the source name and the file name we've then expanded the table now the nice thing with this is it's done it all, it's done all that all those steps for me without me having to think oh i've got to write all this stuff oh what a nightmare right you can write the functions yourself you can do everything like that yourself but power bi doing it data flows doing it for you much easier man i tell you it saves a lot of time and effort so we've got these pulled through now yeah the next thing we need to start thinking through is, is everything in the right order? What do I mean by that? So what do we need? So the next thing that we need to do is to actually take these date time values, convert them. So if we pick on one of these right, and we're going, right, I want to add a custom function. Oh, hang on. There's no custom functions in data flows to do it. How on earth am I supposed to run a custom function against this when there's none there? Yeah. Okay. It's actually a lot easier than you'd, re than you'd think. What we need to do is we need to have a look, see well, what's our custom function name. So it's fixed date time to time. We've got column selected, we've got that. So if we can add column, add a custom column, okay? And this is gonna be pickup time. What we're gonna do, fixed date time to time, open brackets, and then let's double click on that column to put that in, yeah? Click okay, right? And you'll find, because we've called the function, put something in for it, it'll just do it. So the only difficulty is because there's no IntelliSense in data flows as yet, it means you've got to remember the file, the function name. Okay. And in this case, see, I've got it wrong. What we're going to do is we're going to do that, copy that, yeah? click on that, copy it. I'm back to a yellow, added me custom. I've not got it right. So let's click on that and paste it. And that'll now have worked. So if we scroll over there, you see we've now got time value. They don't look great because, you know, 200, because zero, zero, they've converted them to text. Okay. Right? But when I convert this to time, which we'll do when we do the other one, you'll see makes sense. So once again, what we're going to do is go through, create a new custom column, 
Yeah, zoom back in here again. Right, it's gonna be drop off time, the old time. Okay, and I've learnt my lesson. I'm gonna paste in my function, open brackets, drop off, click OK. And that'll work for it. Said it before, say it again. Because you've got some of these, let's put some properties in for so make sense. So this is gonna be fix. First one was pick up, wasn't it? Pick up time, click OK. Properties, fix. Drop off time, click OK. So we're starting to build this up. We've now got to the point where we've got dates, times, starting to make sense for it. Last thing we need to do for both these is let's convert them both to time. So we've pulled that all together there for one hour. Yeah, that's all good. That's all working. Next thing we need to do is to expand the geography stuff, isn't it? So what we've got, if you remember, as I said, got these pickup locations. So pick up. ID, drop off ID, and it would make sense if we put the geography in here. The main reason for doing this is just there's so much, the joins will be massively used. But what we can do is we can try, you might prefer to put the location as a separate dimension. Again, part of the problem is if you're wanting to be able to say going from and to, if you remember what we looked at in a previous video, if you're trying to use the relationship as a part of an axis or two axes, it becomes very difficult to write a measure that will work with it. So in practice for this, I'm going to put these both in together. Over time, if I was going to look at this properly and do more work with it, I might want to go in and say, right, we need to actually change something here or we need to change something there. There's work that we could do. Like we might put in a pickup location dimension and a drop off location dimension. And in terms of your space, you're probably saving an awful lot to do it that way. For this, I'm going to put them in together. And what we might do is we'll look at it as we're getting towards the end of this is see what would happen if we split them out and did them as outside as separate dimensions externally so we can actually see how that works. And also you'll be able to see the, the impact in terms of like the size on the model. And hopefully that'll help embed it that, you know, big models, big tables, you want to really look at keeping them as narrow as possible. Sorry, let's see. What can we do with this? So in here, got that. So let us scan in and let us say here, let's join it. So on home, we're going to merge in a query. Brings in the nice query merge dialog box. What we want to merge in is pickup location. See, it's already selected. We're going to merge that in with our location lookup, location ID. We're not going to use any fuzzy merges. We're going to use a left out a join. And we can see if we click OK, we can wait for the estimated matches, but I'll just click OK. And that's going to merge in we pick up locations. So at this point, because it's a merge, don't forget, it's going to be a table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to hit properties, and we're going to hit merge in, pick up locations. Click OK. Next thing to do, and I'll tell you this now before you've gone, oh, he doesn't know what he's doing, right? I'm expecting to see an error the next one, right? And there's a reason for it. And it's partly to do with data flows. So I want to show you it and show you how to fix it. So we're going to merge in a query. Okay. I haven't selected a column this time from the top one. That's not the issue. So what we all we need to do is scroll along, tell it this time we're interested in drop off location ID. And then from our location, look up location ID, click OK. And hopefully we'll get a nice error. So we've got an error. See, there's a warning. Okay. Contains errors. Right. The issue is, you can see here, right, the location lookup is the name that it's giving to the new column. Okay. So what we need to do is just rename that. So if we call that DO location, right, you see that error disappears. Okay. Or we we'll certainly get the second column now. What is that warning for? Oh, yeah. Because we've still got these tables. Okay. So you see, because the columns were the same, had the same name, it couldn't deal with it. This one, again, go back to the pickup location merging. If we expand this, let's call it PU. I'll tell you what, let's just call it PU and let's just call this one DO. Okay, it'll make sense when we do the next steps. Properties. Okay, so we've got that. Simple, man. This is dead easy, this leg. Now what we need to do is expand these. So if we click on expand, and I'm going to leave this, the original column name. I'm going to untick location ID. And we'll keep the rest, yeah? So we've expanded PU. Now let's expand the drop off. Okay, again, I'm going to leave the original column as the prefix. I'm going to do that. I'm going to click OK. Right now, by doing that, what it's done is it's left in DO and PU dot. And I will, might as well leave, leave that. That gives a nice way of highlighting yeah, what they relate to. Okay, and I've left in service zone. I'm not sure if we'll use it, but I wanted to see how it actually does start to play in and see if there is any value in it. If there's not, as I say, we could drop it. If there is, we could keep it. So at this point, we're about ready to say, right, this is our main 
yellow data set. Okay. We need to rename these columns. I think that makes sense, doesn't it? So this is going to be, well, let's check because this is where we're going to start thinking how are we going to combine these two data sets together into one table? Yeah, because we're going to have to do an append as the final step. So start going through and you say, right, let's look. So we've got pick up date, drop off date. So if we come back to yellows, pick up date, drop off date. Then we've got passenger count. We've got a couple of other things first, different ways of going through it. Got passenger count further on though, passenger count. Core tables that we're now we're going to need. So PU, location ID, DO, location ID. So what have we got? PU, location ID, DO, location ID. Okay, payment type, fair amount. So we can see we're starting to get to the point where it may, it's going to be tricky to pull these through these all together. These are the next ones I want to just make sure I've got that are right. So if we're going back through to the green and we'll scroll over to these, see we've got DO and that's not the same. What we could do is we've got pu dot 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 and then our here and again as you're getting familiar with the m and being prepared and not too scared of actually going in and saying right to make this work i just need to put a dot here here and here oh it have made the sense right, here we go so there we go so once we get familiar with our m it's easy to go through and say, right, how do I fix these column names? You find there's column names in lots of them. It's really simple to just update that manually, remembering it's case sensitive, and you can then start to do those and pull those together. So the last thing we're gonna do is an append. So we're gonna append queries as new. So the first table, green, yellow, if you've got, if you've done more, you come through here and you just bring them through into there. Okay, right, click okay. And this is gonna be NYC, Right now, the way this works, it will go through and it will pick and say, right. So we can see here, we've got two sets of times, pick up time, PU time, right? So that's something we're going to have to fix. Okay. Looking back across here, I think we're not too bad with the rest, but the only way to fully tell is going to be if we, when we start to combine it all in the next one, what we'll do is we'll gun in and we'll fix these PU date times. So in green, we've got PU time, DO time. Okay, great. In fact, actually, let's fix it properly, yeah? So where we've added the custom, do it there, eh? PU time, DO time. Okay, and then here we're going, we're just going to change it. All right, so we've got all that pulled back together. Let us go and see what this New York taxis look. Okay, and we can see we've now got just the time field, got all them, that's it. It looks like it's now worked, everything's set up properly. Given the way it's structured, Power BI, without being in premium, does not like it. So what we'd have to do is untick to disable the load for the, the green and the, the yellow, which is fine because all we really wanted was to have the combined data set there anyway. So we've got our combined data set now. It's all good to go, isn't it? Aye. So what we're going to do is let us go hit save and close down here. It's going to validate the queries. Is this a valid set of queries? Hopefully it'll say yes. And then we're going to tell it to refresh it all. Because didn't forget, and this is again, I keep saying it every time we do data flows. All I've done at this point is build an instruction set. I haven't built any data tables or anything like that as far as Power BI is actually concerned. So let this run through, validate the queries. All right, so we've got the data sets now built. So let's hit refresh now, okay? And that's now gonna run through and start the build process. And then here, hit the refresh now there. Set up a refresh schedule for this as well if we wanted to, right? So I've set this up every Sunday, it's gonna refresh. So if I ever add any files to it, It'll come through on the Sunday. Dead simple. Great. So what do you think? This makes sense. We able to do these, do you think? I mean, data flows are one of them things that when you first start out with them, they kind of be like, like I don't know if I'm sure what I can do with this. I don't know how this is going to work. Okay. It, it is a tricky concept. Right. The nice thing about data flows is that they will build it and they will host your data in the Power BI service. Right. So you're not having to think through and say, right, where are we? Where's the data actually existing? It's all going to be in the Power BI service. In this case, because we've connected up to data that's in the OneDrive for business or the SharePoint online locations, I don't need a gateway. Right. So there's no need for a gateway anymore which that's oh, a big thing. If you think through having to deploy a Power BI gateway, enterprise gateway to read files, which a lot of places have done, a lot of places do that, right? It becomes tricky. And you then start thinking through, well, who's got access to the files? Is it the right place? Is it okay? So having 
the idea that we can use SharePoint online as our access route in terms of where this person doesn't have access to, that person does, this should be, they shouldn't be, right? They can then start to actually deliver up using data flows and this kind of a routine, a way to actually build and establish and share data across the enterprise from a nice, easy to curate, easy to manage data set. Now, if you're going to use CSV files or Excel spreadsheets as your main data repository, you really do need to think about it. Now, I've mentioned in the past that there's issues and the way this goes. A lot of this does tie back to what's called shadow IT versus your mainstream IT. Now, from a shadow IT perspective, this is ideal because I, I now this. I'm in charge. It's my data. I know what I'm doing. Didn't need no IT coming here telling me how to do it properly, right? This is proper. This is this will work for you. Didn't get me wrong, right? I mean, I'm showing you this. This is a hundred million rows data set and it's going to work, right? Me worries with it. So it's not going to be about the size of your data that's going to cause you problems with this. What causes you problems is if you start to build stuff and no one knows who's built what or how it's all structured, you have problems. Now, across my career, I've always come across regular thing, right? Be it Excel spreadsheets, access databases, items that have been created by shadow IT, now, invariably, they will run massive core parts of a business or an enterprise. Right? And no one really understands within the enterprise really what it's doing. And they'll say, well, we won't use IT to do these things because they don't understand what we need. And we say, well, do you understand what you need? And they go, well, of course I understand. I run this spreadsheet. What does the spreadsheet do? Well, anyway, I know what happens. I run the spreadsheet and it works. If that's you, make rings a bell of truth. It's one of the things that Power BI will help you with. One of the nice things that this does do, right, and this is something that this methodology and this mindset does really well, is it forces you to start to actually document everything that goes on. Now, if we've got to the point where we've got data flows that are pulling all the data in, and then we've got some Power BI desktop files that are doing things with them, those are two items that can then be passed over to an IT infrastructure. So you can then say, right, we want to become better at what we do. Bring this to the next level. And that is a very powerful thing. So hope you enjoyed it. You know, didn't forget, like and subscribe down below. You know, tell us how what you think. Tell, you know. Think I'm stupid? Do you think I'm not right with any of this? You know, I think I'm not right in the head. Well, you're probably not the only one. Right? Let's all keep moving with this. Right? Stick with it, and don't forget all about having some fun with this. Because honestly, the world of work is dull enough as it is. Let's keep going, keep smiling, keep having fun. So there we go. That's week one. Join us for next week for week two. Surprise, surprise. Right? Like and subscribe. Take care of yourselves. Have a great weekend. Ta-da.